Today we're going to talk about reports. Uh, reports are a, a critical, uh, important part of PlanSwift. Um, I firmly believe that you really should start with your reports before you even start doing a takeoff um, and, and creating all of your parts and assemblies. The reason for that is your reports are primarily driven by the properties within those items. So if you want to see your data reported in an output um, that makes sense to you or the way you want to structure your, your data and filter and sort by that data, you really got to take that into account when you create those parts and assemblies. So it's best to have that laid out um, exactly how you want to see it before you proceed to build all your parts and assemblies. As you can see here in this example, um, these column headings are all properties within the items. Name, description, quantity, units, cost each, markup, percent. Those all exist within the properties of any of these given items. So if I were to double click on this item here and pull it up, you'll see that those properties all exist. Now I can report against any one of these uh, properties. I can also sort um, my list, if you will, uh, by right clicking on any heading. I can sort that data ascending or descending, um, turn group footers on, uh, turn headers on, adjust the column width. Uh, and you can see that I'm grouping at the top. In this case, I'm grouping by the folder. If I wanted to group by folder and then the name, I could simply drag that item into the field. You can see now I'm grouping by folder and then by name. So here's my folder and then there's the name, then here's the item. So you've got your basic grouping um, and your sorting. Then you also have um, a filtering capability. And filtering is different in that you're filtering for a certain criteria. In this case, what I was filtering for were um, takeoff items, just digitizers. You can see my filter at the bottom where it says is takeoff item equals true. So it's, I'm, I'm looking for specific items from within PlanSwift, from within my project. And that's all I want to display. Now you can see I have a, a group here called basic takeoff reports. And the basic takeoff reports all have the same filter applied in that I'm only looking for digitized quantities. So if I look at any of these reports, they're just going to have areas, linear segments, point counts, and they're all based upon that filter. If I look down in some of my detailed reports, I start filtering for uh, different items from within my PlanSwift project. Uh, for instance, if I look at my subcontract summary list, I've just pulled in subcontract items and filtered out all the other data. And you can see that reflected down at the bottom where my type equals subcontract. Now, while I'm talking about the types, I'll take a minute here just to explain that the 30 or so reports um, that come with PlanSwift by default are all looking at a certain type. In this case, my types are uh, the type of subcontract, the type of material, uh, a labor type, equipment type, and then the category of other, which would just be miscellaneous costs. So that's where all of these reports are driven from. Now as you can see there's just a multitude of reports that we've included by default but you are not limited to just these options. Um, again it really depends on how you want to see your data sorted. Now if I go down to my report showing all items let me just pull up a detailed estimate with a markup and as you can see here, I'm sorting by folder and then by type. So if I start expanding my folder, inside of each folder you'll see that I have the types listed. 
So in my exterior feature folder, I have type of labor. So here's my labor item for that folder. Now what you can also do in your reports is you'll see this is the estimate with markup. So I could actually come in here and change what my costs are um, just by typing in a new value here. That value is then updated right in the report. And it's also reflected in the properties of the item. So it's a permanent change. Again, you can see it's divided material, labor, each folder is looking at that. Um, and I get to the bottom here, miscellaneous items, I have equipment and subcontracts. So I'm actually pulling in some different items. And if we go down to the bottom again, you can see that filter where my type is in uh, the group of part, material, labor, subcontract, equipment, or other. So you can start to see the power here. You're not limited to those items, but you can add additional ones if you like. If I were to have uh, another property, maybe uh, division, which is another popular one a lot of people use, I could actually f do my filtering and sorting and create re reports by division um, or phase. Any of those topics um, can certainly be grouped in there. Now if we look at the actual filter, let me pull that up here by clicking the Customize button. You'll see you'll get this um, uh, filter builder, little wizard. Um, and you can see right here where I'm pulling in my type. That's my type property. Um, and that's what I wanted to create. All my reports were based on type. But you can see I could select any criteria um, and specify what that's going to be. A couple other things to talk about while we're doing this uh, overview of the reports. You'll notice that I have some subtotals going on um, based on my grouping. That's all handled and the format that, that's being displayed here is handled under the columns. So if I click the columns button you'll see for this report and this is specific only to this one report where I've set specific formats on how I want to see that data um, presented to me on the screen uh, in such a way where you see the format of the, the dollar sign uh, 3000 separated by a comma um, and then two decimal places and that is actually set under um, where I'm seeing my total so you'll see the dollar sign the number sign the comma two numbers and then 0, 0.00 that's that's that format that's the format that I wanted to see Again, you can have as many columns on your reports. Uh, I have the data type of the column. I also have a formula column, and we'll explain that later. And then you have your whether or not that column is visible. And you can see these are all the columns that are currently visible on the screen. Now, I can also turn on totaling at the bottom just by right-clicking and selecting sum. So I could actually give a sum for any quantity or any column. Uh, that I want to see a number underneath. In this case, um, what this report is doing is, since it's a costing report, let me just expand a few of these, um, you'll see I have my quantity, uh, the units if I have it displayed, my cost each, the markup that I have on that item, the calculated price each, how much was marked up on each item, then the price total. And what I'm doing here at the bottom is this is actually just pulling in the average. So based on all of these items and their respective markup, I'm averaging 17.73% uh, markup across the board. So it's taking an average of all items and then generating my total for the project. As you can see, you can group um, all of your reports into folders, which I've done here. Uh, just to kind of give ourselves a, a, a little bit of detail on what each of the reports encompass. If we look at our report actions, again, these are specific to each report, so you can totally customize how each report looks. I mean, they could have different color schemes, um, uh, different layouts to, to each report, so each one of these is specific to the report. If I go to the report settings, here's where we're seeing the color scheme, um, what is displayed, certain behaviors, 
Uh, do I want everything to expand when I print the report? Uh, the formatting of the page. The styles, this is where the colors are defined. Uh, you can change these up to suit your own needs. Preview options, um, what's going to be visible, um, the auto height. Cards we're not utilizing in PlanSwift. Um, this may be a feature that we enable later, uh, as well as some charting functionality. If we go to our page setup, here's where we can set the size of that report. In this case, this is going to be uh, printed to a letter size paper in a port portrait format. Uh, here's the size and width of that paper. You can set your margins, um, set your header and footer. Uh, if you'd like to have your header and footer visible, you can also add in uh, say today's date. Uh, if you wanted the date printed on the bottom of each sheet, you could do that. Um, the number of pages, page one of however many pages. You could display all that information if we go to the print preview you would see that date and page number added right in. Once you set your page up and set your color layouts, those are saved for that report. Once you have your reports built, um, you have a few options. Uh, you can print it directly from PlanSwift. Uh, if we go to our print preview, uh, you can print from the print preview. You can also export that to a PDF. Um, that's, that's actually built into the reporting module. Uh, saving the report saves it in the um, report format. It's not saving it as like a Word document or something like that. Uh, just wanted to make sure everyone was clear on that. You can still export this view to Microsoft Excel, export the, uh, the view to uh, comma separated values, to an XML document, to an HTML document, or export it to an Excel template. This pretty much gives you um, just a basic overview of the entire reporting scheme.